All right, so um, yeah, my name is Julian. I work at Cookpad. So I guess most of the people here know about Cookpad. And uh, specifically, during the last, what, uh, three months, I've been working on the English version of Cookpad, but em.cookpad.com. And uh, we do some stuff that's involving translation. So uh, I'm here to talk about this. And that's it. And I'm really sorry for the slides, they're really shitty. I didn't take so much time to make like fancy slides with effects and everything. So designer is here, forgive me. It's going to be like a presentation from an engineer. Uh, so yeah, here we are. Uh, so we have cookpad.com, it's the English version of Cookpad, right? And uh, to start with, we translate it, we're importing Japanese recipes from cookpad.com, good recipes with like cool steps pictures and everything. And uh, we have translators and reviewers who are actually, uh, well, translating them to English and then uh, check out all the errors and stuff. And uh, we started a few months ago doing that kind of stuff um, on Transifex. It's a platform to, um, where you can upload your data and then have users and then translate uh, in another language. Um, and uh, the website itself has been well accessible from uh, August 5th. So it's not even a month uh, we've been releasing. So um, Transifex looks like this. Uh, so basically, imagine a recipe where you have like ingredients over here and then quantities, you know, it's really like bare bones, like there's a text, there's a text, there's a text, you translate it and, and be happy about it. And, uh, and you have some tools here like, that can help you. And uh, for instance, this guy, the green cut pesto, is automatically translating. Uh, from the beginning because someone before in our pool of translated stuff already translated it, so it's kind of cool. Wow. And you have some um, search uh, suggestion stuff that can help you when you want to translate. At the same time, the problem is that uh, we have no control at all over the process and there are lots of improvements we want to make to this thing, uh, but we just can't, right, because it's a outside service. And one thing would be, for instance, that you're translating recipes, but you have no clue about the recipe. What is it? You know, you don't have the images. You don't have, you don't have the whole. Okay, how does it look like? You know, how does it feel? So um, very early on, we started to think, okay, we need to make an in-house translation system, right, for our own needs, and we can customize it all the way. And in Cookpad, we have the resource to actually build it, and that's my job for the free last month. And so it's really bare bones, you know, it's like, yeah, you can translate, but actually you can see the, the, the picture and how it feels, so it's, uh, it's still better. Uh, but, of course, there are lots of problems, and I would say opportunities, right, Yogi? Uh, <laughs> so the thing is that, yeah, as I said, yeah, Transiflex has some cool features, you know. Uh, well, mostly it's kind of crap, right, but in our case. But it has some cool features. So, as I said, you know, it has this automated, semi-automated translation, glossary and stuff like this, and you have like an indicator of progress, you have been like 25% in the recipe, you know, like um, you can measure your uh, advancement. So today I'm just going to talk about this semi-automated phrases translation because Georgi was insisting that we make some quick and short presentations. Uh, so, in our case, uh, the goal is not to uh, translate automatically recipes because, I mean, even Google Translate, you've all been using it, I guess, uh, you paste some Japanese text and it kind of works, but it's still crap, right, in a way. Uh, so in our case, we're like, okay, let's just focus on the ingredients translation because the vocabulary is restricted and, uh, well, we don't have to deal with the grammar. And, uh, of course, uh, for translators, having a list of ingredients to translate like a name, quantity, name, quantity, name, quantity, it's kind of boring. And when you have this kind of a boring task, uh, you tend to not pay attention, right? So you have lots of typos and everything. So it's really one area where you can make an impact. And uh, without going so you know, deep inside the uh, crazy algorithm and stuff. So um, uh, overall, in translating systems, you have lots of challenges. Because when you think about it, you have, uh, I, put, I put some examples here, but you have like, Ambiguity, right? You say, I'm booking a flight or I read a book. But, uh, you know, in those cases, it's a different word, right? So if you want to translate it in French or in Japanese, it's going to be a different verb. Uh, you have the word or the problem in English and Japanese, as you all know, I guess, uh, with the verbs going all the way uh, up there, and it's all scramble, right? And uh, of course, you have the pronouns where you have in English, like, eat something, you know, what it, what does it refer to? You don't know, right? So, in a very specific case, 
uh, talking about ingredients, right? When you have like tamaniki, it means water, right? But then you're like, hey, in Japanese you don't have plural, right? So you don't say, if you just say tamaniki, you have no idea if it's one or it's a thousand. Uh, so that's one thing. And another thing is that from Cookpad, we're pulling those recipes, right? And the uh, users, uh, we don't have any rules or any uh, uh, characters limit on the quantities or the name of the ingredients. So it means that sometimes you have some crazy quantities, like it's like, okay, tamaniki, one. And then in parentheses you have, but if you don't have tamaniki, you can use this instead because it's cool and you can buy it 200 yen at this shop or whatever. <laughs> it's just crazy so you can't really parse it and you, you don't want to be, be involved in that, right? And uh, another thing is that you have ambiguities even in the quantities, that should be simple, right? But sometimes you have like this kind of like, oh, ichi. So, okay, sure. But then in the tamaniki context, it means like it's a large uh, onion. But then you have like olive oil. And they just write OET, and it means one big, well, tablespoon. Um, <laughs> so you have this kind of ambiguity to deal with. And of course, sometimes, even the very simple cases, where it's just two or three or whatever, in English, you tend to translate like something like two and specify, you know, because, well, it's more natural way. So, yeah, you get to deal with all those complexity. So, Overall, how do, do all those machine translations work? I mean, if you, when you go to Google Translate, how does it work? I mean, it's incredible, right? You have like, what, 50 languages or something? It's crazy, right? And um, so I'm going to talk about this. Uh, it's not an engineer's talk. Uh, I, I kept it very uh, low entry, right? Um, and what I'm going to do in the next couple of minutes is just talk about uh, this whole thing. And you can find all the videos. It's actually a big uh, YouTube list. Uh, from very, very cool uh, courses uh, from Columbia University, I think. I was talking about this, but it's going to be a very quick summary here. Um, so, back in the days, at the beginning of time, when you started to have computers and the guys were like, okay, let's do some automated translation, we can do it. They went like, okay, like direct translation, right? So it's like, war by war, no ISIS, nothing, just like bare bones. I have a book, so it's a, well, leave in French or horn in Japanese. Um, but, and you also have like, plenty of rules, like, when I see a word like much, how do I translate it? Like, when you say, okay, how much is it? Or, it is much better. One language to another, you know, the word is going to be different, right? So you have like, crazy rules going like, if the previous word is that, then this, and if the previous is this, and the next word is that, then that. And of course, it doesn't scale, right? Because for every single language you want to add, you need to build up those new rules from the ground up. So, uh, yeah, forget about it. Uh, also, you know, in English to French or stuff like this, you can do something, maybe. You know, you can have something, but in Japanese, it just doesn't work, right? Because it's completely different. And also, you know, that's like a polygonal case, but in this kind of like examples I named here, you have like, he said that, and I like that car, you know, of course that word, direct translation, doesn't work, right? Because you don't know what, it's highly dependent on the context. Uh, so after that, when all the guys were like, yeah, it's bullshit, we need to do something else. Uh, they went crazy and go with like transfer and Eaton web based system and I won't get into details here because it's just complicated, you know. So imagine you have like a sentence you want to translate and you know that in English this kind of sentence you have this kind of like syntactic tree, syntax tree or whatever, that says okay this is basically how it's working. You have like nouns and verbs and everything and then you transfer that like, to French for instance and we know that the nouns go like this, and then you generate, so it's just crazy. And uh, of course, you know, uh, the guys went to be, well, improve on this, and they even started to build a system where basically you can say, you can analyze a sentence, and say, okay, if you see should, whatever, must, do, whatever, it's completely building a different representation of the, the language, that's completely independent of any language, so that the idea was that you have this kind of like translating to another, well, system, and then from there you can, using rules, do something. But of course, you know, it doesn't work so much. So, uh, back in the 90s, IBM went forward and pushed this uh, thing that's called statistical machine translation. And the concept is just using simple sentences. So, when someone says, uh, I don't know, they call me Masha, and in English you say, ah, I saw cat. Okay, well, you know, well, of course it varies, but when you have plenty and plenty of sentences, you can build. Uh, well, what's called parallel corpora, where you have examples, like in English you say this, in Japanese you say that, and the more you have, 
the more you have uh, good results because uh, you can build probabilities and say, oh, I see that word before, I see that sentence before, and then you can just parse it, fetch it, and that's it, you're done. And that's basically how all the translation systems work right now, even Google Translate. So in our case, back to QuickMap, the implementation right, implementation right now is just that simple. I mean, uh, we're not computer scientists, and we don't have the time uh, for that crap. And, uh, and at the same time, you know, it's just ingredients and quantities. It doesn't involve like going, you know, all the way and build those probabilities and everything. Uh, so in our case, what happens is that when someone says, okay, I'm translating this recipe from Japanese to English, start, automatically it's going to try to fetch in this corpora I built, uh, try to make a match, perfect match, like tamanegi, ikko, and if it finds it, yeah, sure, we are sure that tamanegi, ikko is onion one. And if it can't find a perfect match in the database, it's just going to fall back on a name. It's better than nothing, right? So it's just say if, if some crazy recipe comes and say Tamanegi QZQ, uh, we know it's not here, right? But then you can still go like and say onion and you know leave the translator out. Actually, we're hiring humans to do that job, so it doesn't really matter. It's just more about helping them and making translating translating fun and uh, efficient. So to finish, it's the last slide, Gerbi. Just bear with me. Uh, <laughs> I have this quick, very quick demo. So this is right now Cookpad, uh, and this is the pickup recipe of the day, right? And um, okay, the network is kind of slow because I'm using this 3G. Uh, so Sorry. let's see that guy. Hold on, bear with me. I'm going to go to his this guy's recipe. So on this list, you have like uh, 10 recipes, and I have this bookmarklet uh, that allows me to check how efficient would be the translation in that guy's case, you know, if we wanted to translate all those recipes, how would it go? And that's basically how it goes right now. So as you can see, for instance, you know, someone already translated in sasami as chicken tenders, but <laughs> we've not seen Nippon before. Uh, so that's why you don't have quantity here. But at the same time, you know, someone already translated sake, well, um, well, also, well, I don't know, sake, uh, <laughs> and, and call ni, so it's two teaspoons, right? So in some cases, it's just completely blank because uh, right now it's really bound to the recipes we've seen before. And on en.kupa.com, as of now, we've been translating mainly Japanese cooking recipes. So for instance, if you put a, I don't know, Italian pasta recipe in there, uh, it's likely that half of the ingredients won't be uh, in there. But, you know, it's just a matter of time, right? Yeah. And uh, so basically, yeah, that's how it goes, you know. You can go a long way, sometimes, you know, you have those things. And right now, I didn't push it too far because obviously these things are really easy to just infer, right? You can just parse them and do some regular expression thing to, you know, it's, it's that simple, right? But even that, you know, I couldn't be bothered, you know, because the idea is to just rely on what's been translated before. Uh, so basically, yeah, that's, that's how it goes, you know. Uh, that's where we are right now, and there are lots of room for improvement. But, you know, most of the time, you will just helps a lot, you know, for translators, yeah. like, hey, I don't have to deal with that crap so much anymore, you know. And that's it. So if you have questions, just... Questions? No? no. It's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, oh. um, so when I make a, made a risky, on Cookcraft, I typed like, a couple of ingredients, and like, they suggest there is a suggestion of suggestion word, right? Yeah, like if I type Tamanegi. Yeah, complaint. I'm asking. Oh, like, if I, okay. On Cookpad, Japan Cookpad, right? When you type ingredients, you have suggestion, right? Yeah. So, so, so. Uh, so, you know, if I type Tamanegi, mm -hmm. they say, like, uh, you know, they they suggest like is it katakana tamanegi or is it like tama is kanji yeah, yeah, yeah. and negi? They have a bunch of them, so I wonder like I'm fine with anything. You know, I will yes. just write onion, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so I thought like, <laughs> is it it makes easier to translate if they you know? Yeah, no, all, like, it tamanegi doesn't matter. Is uh, only actually, this, uh, I, this feature was built by some other guy, and uh, <laughs> 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 no, no names, no names, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I think it's 
been up for like uh, what, almost a year maybe, or at least like half a year, I guess. Uh, and I think the goal was to uh, try to improve when you have like obvious mistakes. Uh, maybe I'm not sure about it because you know uh, it's just it wasn't my team, right? Uh, and but it doesn't make it easier to translate at all because the the whole thing here is that imagine you have this database, you have a table where basically is the way it's modeled right now. You have this name and quantity assembled in Japanese, name and quantity assembled in English, and name and quantities and name and quantities in both languages like separately. And uh, you have a frequency. Um, so when you say tamanegi one and tamanegi one, you know some different translators. One might say one big or whatever, and the other one might say just one, you know, or like they have different versions. So we just use it on based on frequency right now. So it's not related at all to this uh, particular feature. But I can certainly ask, you know, what, what was the whole big plan behind this feature, uh, and maybe you know get back to you uh, for volume three. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how you guys mean the cook bed is making a big opportunity for the English version of Japanese meal recipes? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry? Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean how, how big is the de demand for the English recipes? Of well, you know, the website has been uh, publicly accessible for not even a month right now. Yeah. But uh, we sure had very, very good feedback. And, and, and you know, I'm an engineer, it's not commercial bullshit yeah. here. Uh, <laughs> most, most of the, yeah, most of the feedback was very positive because you had like lots of people who were like, for instance, yeah, my, for instance, they, they like Japanese cooking and they know about cookpad and they know it's like the place to go if you want some real Japanese uh, recipes, I mean, uh, in, in a sense. Oh. And, and, uh, and some people were like, yeah, I, I, I've been using Cookpad, but I, I can't read Japanese, so I've been trying and I've been, you know, using Google Translate, and, and sometimes, you know, they don't have good results, and now they're like, oh yeah, finally I can actually make the real recipe, you know. Yeah. And you have all the guys who were like, um, yeah, my wife is Japanese, yeah. and uh, she's cooking all those delicious things, and uh, now I'll be able to, you know, uh, maybe do something on my own now, uh, okay. uh, yeah, kind of. So far, so good, I would say. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because I know that uh, a lot of people from overseas are like uh, having fun with uh, bento, bento, mm. probably. Maybe France too. Yeah. So I think there are a lot of uh, not a chance. Maybe. Yeah, well, you know, I would say the, the, the big problem over there is that when you have uh, Japanese ingredients, it's yeah. not so easy to uh, get your hands on them. Yeah, that's right. So that's definitely one problem we need to solve in the long term. Uh, but other than that, you know, yeah, and cool. we're just going to increase the number of recipes and, uh, sure. you know, see how it goes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I, I took MA in translation studies in the UK, and this, your presentation covered the stuff I all I studied in the UK, and I was, yeah, it was really fun. And I just want to say that, so in the in the screen, there is a, there, there are two words, shosho in the middle, in the shoga and the shoko sho. Yeah, shoko. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And translation of the shosho are different. So yeah. I was wondering why it is that. Uh, uh, because you have differences, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, really, it's based on the translator's data, and. Um, it means that, for instance, if the translator um, Tanaka-san uh, happened to have a recipe with that guy and he translated that way, and he's been the only one who's been having a recipe with that sentence, mm -hmm. yeah. then this guy is going to be picked up. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why you have variations, and that's one problem. Well, one thing that we can improve on is that, for instance, um, we have actually among the translators we have, we have some that are really, really active. And uh, the flow with the system as it is right now is that if this translator, which is really active, uh, is, is making lots of input data in there, then most of the time his or her translation is going to be suggested. And uh, also another problem is with UK English, American English, I don't know, maybe Australian English, New Zealand, whatever, uh, then sometimes you have people like yeah, zucchini for instance, you know, in the UK English, I believe it's courgette, just like in French, and in American, they, they maybe use what, uh, zucchini maybe, I don't know. 
so this is, you know, this kind of issues we need to resolve. So the system right now is very far from being perfect. Uh, it, it's just like a one shot, and uh, it sure helps. And uh, yeah, when I have more time, I will be, you know, improving it and making the world's best system for translating ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 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 yeah. I can't explain it really. No. <laughs> maybe it's like the, looking at the difference between shoga and shogo you know, ginger and salt pepper. So, so in case of ginger, it says a little. In the case of salt and pepper, some are translated to some small amount. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure, you know, if right now I look at the, this database, uh, I, I can't because I'm not in the office, but I'm pretty sure that for shoko so, 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 even in that case, you, you will have a little. But maybe this guy has been referred like five times, and the other guy has been referred like three times. So this guy wins. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's cool. So, so, you know, it's, I don't know if you remember the first slide, but it's like pseudo SMT, because I'm not even building probabilities here. The right way to do it is actually to calculate probabilities one way and calculate probabilities the, from the other way and then you, you, you have a, a good feeling, you, you can do, do a good guess about this is the best, you know. So right now it's really bare bones, basic stuff, but yeah, that's how it goes, you know. <laughs> have you ever considered, uh, sorry, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, have you ever considered making a collaborative tool like in which like people input is um, something like Wikipedia, like some people can edit with knowledge of it, so it can be like growing dynamically yeah. based on the knowledge, instead of like having a tool that translates, you know, having, well, having that against the, the, the machine. Yeah, well actually, you know, one thing I'm thinking about implementing is soon when I have time is to, we're going to have these translators use this tool, and then, so we have the data at the beginning, right? They, they push the button, okay, translate, go. And we know what data the system uh, suggested. And then we know at the end of the translation what data remained. And then we can make a diff. And then from that point, we can improve the system and say, hey, that translation that was suggested, maybe it's not so good because most of the time, like nine times out of 10, the user, well, the translator changed it. And as for the collaborative thing right now, we have this small private community of translators and um, they're actually quite active. Uh, we have a Facebook group because we don't have like, this kind of group feature right now on the website. And most of the, many times you have translators asking each other, hey, how did you go with translating this? Because I saw that some people translate that way, but to me it's more this way. <coughs> and, and then, you know, at the end of the day, we can somehow, yeah, mm, okay. And then when I build a corpora, uh, I have this huge list of words, uh, and I can, you know, somehow tweak it to make it a little bit more efficient. Uh, but then, having this kind of like Wikipedia big scale, anyone can edit, it's, 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 all, it's all free, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's a long way. <laughs> yeah, it's this transition good, yeah, but all those transfer systems are, you know, about the UI, the website, uh, like the buttons, the features and everything, and these are, I would say, quite easy. Uh, because you can just put them and say, hey, you want Facebook in French, just do it, you know. But what, I, what we're addressing here is content itself. Uh, and you have like sensibilities, just as I said, you have know, like American English people and Engl well, English, uh, UK English people, uh, and they, they wouldn't use the same word. And uh, it's, quite, it's quite hard to manage, I, I guess. So maybe it's something we ought to do in the long run, but yeah, it's not on the board right now. Uh, I was going to say, I, I've, been, I've been using a lot since it's translated in English, but I can't read in Japanese. But I'm really interested in, like, well, I mean, I'm one of those guys, I, I, I love them to eat, but I really have no interest in cooking. I mean, I, I, I really, I mean, I, I, like I know how you feel. I, I, love, I love eating, eating but I like the, you love eating? I love eating. I love eating. And the same, like, I, I'll pay for everything, but I don't want to eat. So, like, having this, because, I mean, of course, um, accessing Western recipes is harder because of Western ingredients is that more expensive? And of course, if, you, um, if you're, you're getting someone who's Japanese, it may not be as interesting for them. So, like being able to, to browse Japanese recipes has been really interesting. And like, to be like, oh, you know, I've seen this before, but you know, so and so has never cooked this. Like, I wonder, if, you know, what, how they would put their kind of spin on it. And I'm really interested to see how the website, because this is like such a really amazing website in Japanese, but like, obviously, the users from English is completely different. Yeah. And so, like, how it changed. Like, I'm interested to see how it changes. Like. Yeah. Because there's no, no contributor. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if anyone's contributing in English. Yeah, yeah. I'm certainly not going to contribute. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> well, uh, 
it's not a mystery, right, that uh, right now the, the website is read-only, I would say. You can't even log in. You, oh, okay. Most of the features you can use on cookpad.com are completely unavailable right now because it's just a matter of time. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, in the near future, uh, I have no idea when, uh, possibly 2014, uh, we're going to uh, you know, implement a feature where users from, uh, well, outside Japan can, uh, well, even in Japan, I guess, uh, put, well, upload recipes in English. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, you know, it's a given, right? Uh, but then, you know, how, when, and everything, you know, is completely uh, non-scheduled. Uh, the, goal, the goal right now is just to increase the number of recipes <coughs> and, uh, and spread the word out, because right now, uh, most of the users, I would say, well, you know, it's the first month, so what can you do? But most of the users <laughs> are users that already knew about Cookpad, or users that are really interested in Japanese cooking. So you know about it because I guess you're in this industry, right, in Tokyo and everything, so uh, well, I don't know, maybe word of mouth, but the regular, my, I, I mean, you know, my mom doesn't know about it, right? So uh, the, the goal is to, you know, spread the word out and pump up the number of recipes, and that's what we're focusing on right now. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, you know, implement new features and uh, in the end, trying to get, provide the same level of service as Kumpad in Japanese does right now. Uh, but, yeah, I can't even see it, you know, <laughs> it's just huge, you know. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I mean, I, I was trying to think of another service that maybe had this kind of same history where, like, they just have such an amazing amount of content in their own language. And, like, people, of course, really wanted it in their own language and, like, kind of allowing access to it like that. And it's still going to be very one-sided, but I'm, once again, I'm really interested in how the service is going to change based on, I, I think that many people will be accessing the English site in the well, go, go money. <laughs> <laughs> so, what other languages do you have planned? Uh, right now, no. We, <laughs> really, we've not even thought about it. You know, I'm French, so it would be quite easy to, to, to pull some French version, but do we want it? You know, and uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. We, we've not even started to think about it. You know, it's, it's first in English because it's the most common, you know, you have the <coughs> biggest access, right? And see how it goes, you know. I don't know, you know, maybe in like half a year, the access is just going to be like, you know, plateau and nothing happens. Like, and yeah, okay, well, uh, <laughs> you're on fire, you know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, last, last to each. <laughs> I think uh, the uh, translation suggestion system is based on page uh, and algorithm. That, uh, <coughs> Which uh, product or open source software do you use? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously this transition system is not open source, but actually even if I open sourced it, it's, it's really nothing. It's, bullshit, you know? it's just a bunch of scripts and, uh, and some stupid method that just uh, fetches one translation. So uh, there's no free, right? And actually there's one guy that uh, has been picking up the release of Cookpad in English, and that's into natural language processing. And it's being on GitHub, you have uh, this guy who made actually a bot to scrap recipes in Japanese and English, and then he made another project to actually process those recipes and build a corpora and then translate them. So basically, the guy's been doing what I've been doing for the past two months. Uh, so this is open source, right? Uh, but as for uh, Cookpad, uh, yeah, as a whole, we use it. Bunch of open source stuff, and we actually do release some open source stuff, but it's really engineer focus. Uh, I mean, uh, well, we can talk about this uh, later if you want, but the industry is very interesting right now. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Yeah.